and welcome to Pints of Interest, our Appalachian Oktoberfest event. Um, actually, very few Oktoberfest at this event, but there were some with there for, for an Oktoberfest event. It was it was kind of odd. Um, there was actually five of us at this event. My dad is actually off camera right now. This is Christopher Mack, Mr. Mack. He was kind enough to talk about some of his experiences here at this event, and we've been friends for yeah. But we had uh, an interesting time at Appalachian Brewery. We got to try about, uh, I guess, roughly 25, 26 breweries there. So we got to try a bunch of different beers. Uh, it wasn't that different than some of the other events that we've been at, but there were some very interesting highlights, I think, to this one. Um, yeah. What did people feel was, we'll start negative and go positive. What was the beer that didn't really care for? It was kind of a, not necessarily a low light of it, but it just didn't work out for you. I, what was the smoky one? The, the, oh, okay, the oh, Milbach. The Milbach. Yeah, the, Milbach. Uh, the dark. I had dark something. Smoke. All right, so as far as the dark something's concerned, you didn't care for it, because you don't particularly care for smoky beers in general, and that did not change that. That was like a barbecue in my mouth. That was <laughs> okay, I personally found it to be fairly decent example of a smoked beer that's actually very drinkable to me. It had a very strong smoke aroma, but the actual very strong taste, smoke taste. The taste itself to me was not overly strong. However, I do have a reference point of Victory's Auto, which was the, the campfire crapping in my mouth. Yeah. Kind of just incredibly Sounds smoked flavor. So I thought it actually married well with everything that was going on there. There was actually, unfortunately, the uh, Market Cross. It is a um, brew pub. Brew pub around here. They brew their own beer. They had a year aged Imperial Stout. I really did not care for it. It was a little. I didn't get to try it. It was very raisin. That was a secret stash. You weren't supposed yeah, to. That was a secret. To, that yeah, was a secret stash. That a secret I guess because he saw we had a camera or something. He's like, "Hey, we got this." So we tried it. It wasn't terrible or anything like that. But there were very few stouts here, which is kind of surprising because we're going into that season when yeah. stouts really start coming up. Right. Into the you know the, the cooler seasons and stuff. But yeah, that one didn't really work for me. Uh, there was a couple. The Imperial uh, Pilzilla. That was an Imperial Oh, pills. yes, that was Voodoo. I did not have that one. Though. It was all right. I, yeah, th that, that one I didn't, didn't really do anything care special. for. It didn't, it had, it was just really a, f the taste was really flat, and then it just had this really, like, bitter seltzer almost, yeah. like, finish to it. All right, so there isn't that much negative, which is a great thing to say then about a particular event. So, what would be the positive highlights then? Because Ryan can't shut up about them. <laughs> okay, Voodoo's Winona's Big Brown Ale was good. Very nutty, very brown ale. I example. have to admit, all right, so let's just talk about that one. The Winona Spring Brown Ale, that was one for me personally, as far as the small micro brews, not, not major places. That was from Voodoo Brewery, was probably my favorite micro brew. Like the surprise of. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. Not really into brown ales typically, but I thought that had a really great mouthfeel. The Winona's Spring uh, Brown Ale, I yeah. really enjoyed it. I'm not a fan of browns either. But this particular one was. It almost made me think nice. of uh, I cashew. enjoyed this one. It made me think of cashew. Probably our favorite, actually, new microbrew that we discovered here that we have not had before. Blue Canoe. Canoe. Yeah. It's up yeah. out of Erie. Uh, my dad really liked both the beers that they had there. It was the Heavy Kevy. Uh, heavy Kevy. Heavy Kevy. Heavy, yeah. heavy Kevy and, uh, was, was the Scottish Ale. Scottish, Scottish, Scottish Ale, which was, had a really unique taste to it. And then they had a uh, chai stout. It was yeah, called Black Chai really Affair. Now you can run Black, Black Chai Affair. Yes. That was really surprising. I mean, it was it was very really strong unique. chai taste. They grew yeah. a new stout every month. And oh, really? A lot. Oh, okay. stout for the month. My dad uh, talked to them right. at length about some of the stuff that was going it, on there. I can't say that I would drink a lot of it because it's very odd taste, but it was very surprising. It was very interesting. It was good. I think it was a very good taste. It was, it was good, definitely chai. I mean, you could definitely taste the chai. It was very front ended, loaded in that respect, but very good in small microbrew. Yeah. Kind of thing, um, yeah. We enjoyed both the ones nice. from that, and then Marzoni's, um, their Appalachian IPA was very interesting. It was unique. I had, had a say. lot of stuff going on, very grassy. Um, there wasn't a lot of hops bitterness. It was very interesting. It had a weird maltness to it, it did. and almost like a licorice kind of thing to it. it. I don't really care for that personally in my IPAs. That ultimately, for me, I didn't really I, care for. It. I found yeah, it. Did you? Yeah, yeah, you had that too. Uh, the, I'm the I'm the pumpkin ale guy. I came in with oh, the yeah. pumpkin ale, so Fakely's. Oh, the Imperial, devious, the devious Imperial, devious Imperial pumpkin. Ale. I think it surprised best. all of us because it, it was much better than it was in the bottle. We yeah. had it in the bottle, and yeah, Chris came up, was like, "You got to try this." I'm like, "Oh, it's the devious from them." Yeah, 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 we've had that, and then we actually tried it from the tap that they had, and it was. Completely 
completely different beer, and it was actually really very good. good. And I have really had good. It. I've had it. I had a full pint of it uh, relatively recently before we had it in the bottle, and it was. I, I felt that it was all right, but not like having, this. Having it something today, about this batch was exceptional. Really I was surprised good. at how much better it tasted today. It had that. Um, Nutmeg and allspice, yeah. and everything that you want, and it still really had good. a slight hint of pumpkin. So, and it had that nine percent ABV, good. which gave it a nice mouthfeel, but it wasn't it overly alcoholic. You didn't taste the alcohol. No, it wasn't it didn't kicking alcohol you with finish. alcohol. It wasn't kicking you with pumpkin. It wasn't like smashing. It's good. The so other highlights that we had: um, the rehab. Actually, we had some interesting stuff. It's a local rehab stands for basically a regional Harrisburg uh, area. Area oh, brewers. Regional, so home brewers. Great regional area Harrisburg yes, area yeah. home brewers. There was some good stuff there that we had. We tried the Doppelbach, the German Pills, and the Czech Pilsner too. Yeah. Czech. We all had that, and I thought all of them were actually were pretty damn good. Yeah, they were. That was, yeah, that, that was good home brew. They were able to do the. They ran so out. Good so on you guys. Was, so, oh, that's good. Yeah. They were yeah, also the, true. They the were also the only ones on the balcony. Yes, which, which may was have a had good to do with place it. to be well, because yeah. everybody was coming out to the balcony everyone was because out the, it was really this, crowded. This awesome like little wood balcony, absolutely fantastic day to be outside. <laughs> Interesting highlight: um, Torch Parasolis was here again. How do you feel about the torch bear sauce? Rapture. Tonsils are starting to. Do you feel like you've been raptured? Do you yeah, want to be raptured? I do right now. Yeah, it tastes like burning. It tastes like pain and death. Oh my gosh. Yeah, right? Because it doesn't stop. That's the main problem. It doesn't. You can calm it down a bit, <laughs> but as soon as that thing that calms it down is gone, it's just right back there. And, and I am in so much pain right now. <laughs> Do you want to explain why you just spit in a garbage can there? Because I'm salivating that much from the Is hour. it painful salivation or? It's not comfortable. Torch bear hot sauce, it lets you know that you're alive. All, all of your experiences seem to not be as bad as me. Maybe I'm, I guess I'm a wussy when it comes to the stuff. I do have a lot of hot sauce and it didn't. It seemed to affect me more when I had it before than what you guys had. I, I just at this yeah. point it's now moved. Actually it's about right down in here. Yeah. Two hours I later. I still got a little bit of out. It was a good experience. I think there was some, some interesting beer there and there was also some pedestrian kind of stuff. Stuff yeah. that we've had yeah, all the time. Uh, there was, and... you know, the, the typical Magic Hat stuff like uh, number nine and Circus Boy, which is their, their standard beers. Which are, are decent. Um, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing but we haven't seen Magic Hat in anything yeah. else. This is the, the first Old Forge. Event that we've oh, really? That Magic Hat has been at. Okay. So Old Forge, they had Trogues was their Trogues, standard stuff. They Victory, had. they had Saint Bonif or uh, Bounteous, which was uh, new for us. Boisterous. It was Saint Boisterous. 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 Thank you. Boisterous. Uh, it was Saint Boisterous. It was their Hellerbach. I thought it was pretty decent. As far as the lighter beers are concerned, that was probably my favorite out of those. They, they, so, I don't know. There was a lot of Victory. Um, there's a lot of Hefeweizens and just very yeah. standard, boring type yeah, of Hefeweizens. Yeah. yeah, Victory, the Old Forge, the Swashbuckler, we had the Raven like you mentioned, which is an interesting kind of, it, had an, it was like a floral lager with a little bit of an IPA. It was a very interesting mix of things. It was decent, I, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was an interesting, it's something to try for people who are adventurous in a beer, want to try something that tastes a little bit different, it definitely did. Sam Adams was there. That's true, Sam Adams was there. We had they Nothing you had haven't four. had before. Well, they had their cherry wheat, which to me taste, uh, smelled like angel food cake. It did. I, I, I had that one. It, it was wasn't too bad. Fan. It was refreshing I'm after all those other beers. Yeah. Just yeah. smell. Yeah. I didn't that, drink that it. Smell I just smelled true. it. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Good. It would um, be. They had their Tasman Red, which we have uh, a mini soda of that one that we've had. Oh, the doppel, their Doppelbach was way too sweet. Way too. Yeah. It was like the Mofland from uh, Troves. Yeah, it's very. Yeah. It was almost. It wasn't quite to the level of a barley wine or yeah. anything like that, but it was along those lines. And yeah, yeah, Mofland's 
Probably. It was it yeah. was definitely up in that range. I didn't care for. It. They had the October Fest there, which we already know. Awesome. Right. Um, I don't think it really compares to the Flavor Renaissance Fair personally. No. It's decent. It's a good one no, if you have some free time much. and stuff. But and I kind of wish they didn't have. They had a live band there on the second floor, was which was a little. Loud it wasn't an Oktoberfest band, it needed an oompa band. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, feel, yeah. I just feel like I was... We need some polka action going yeah, on. They said gonna... they were going to have a polka band. It was uh, Sons of Bill was the name of the band. That was yeah. there. there was nothing like, wrong with them, but it was a little loud in such an enclosed space with that many people. It yes. was hard to get around in there. Uh, maybe sell maybe a couple, few less tickets per session. And somebody yeah. took my beer glass too. And someone point. did take his So beer that instantly sucks. for me yeah. knocks yeah. it down. Yeah. Someone that's the first one I need to be a little bit more responsible. He was, he was in the rapture and his beer glass disappeared. It got rapture. Sure. Maybe your beer glass is purer than you are. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I um, take my beer glass. Not me. It was good. I'd be curious yeah, to try maybe some of the other Oktoberfests where maybe they feature a little bit more of the winter beers. Yeah. There really wasn't any winter ales here. It was a lot of half of ice. Not a lot of Oktoberfests. Not a lot of stouts. That well. no, yeah, I would have thought the, the beers would have been a little bit more towards, even though it's a nice mid 70s day, that it would be a little bit more towards, hey, what we have to look forward to coming up for winter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I agree. So I guess for points of interest in the Appalachian Oktoberfest event, we say cheers. Cheers. cheers.